Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Do I need to press any buttons? No, no, it's on. Adjust as you want. You're on the you're on the camera. You're on the camera. Okay. Thank you everybody. Good morning. Lieutenant Governor Fetterman, Speaker Torzai, President Scarnati, Leader Corman, Leader Costa, Leader Cut Cutler, Leader Dermody, members of the General Assembly, invited guests, friends and family, and especially my wife, Frances. And of course, my fellow Pennsylvanians. This is my fifth budget address. And for the last four years, sitting over here to my left was Karen Coates. She was a trusted advisor to Speaker Torzai, a friend, a mother, a sister, a daughter, and a respected member of our community. And for the same four years, I'd look out into this chamber and I'd see Flo Fabrizio, Mike O'Brien, Sid Kovulich. This year, they're not with us. So let us all remember their lasting impact, their commitment to service, and carry forward in their memory. <laughs> Three weeks ago, I had the honor of taking the oath of office for another term as governor. I spoke of a Commonwealth on a comeback, a Pennsylvania on a path to a more functional government, a more prosperous economy, and a brighter future for our children. The people of our Commonwealth have proven that despite the challenges we face, Pennsylvania remains a place worthy of its history, a place where people can find good work, strong communities, and opportunity for their children. And here in Harrisburg, we've proven that despite our differences, we remain capable of doing what Washington just can't seem to be able to do, tackle big challenges, put aside petty partisanship, and serve the public interest. We must never forget that embedded in Pennsylvania's history is the fact that not one, but two noble experiments were launched here. First, there was William Penn's holy experiment. Second, the founders launched their own experiment in self-government. Both of these are perpetual experiments. When we reaffirm our commitment to these experiments, we honor both our history and we honor those founders. And we show our constituents that whether they voted for us or not, we were making these experiments work right here and that our government is worthy of their trust. Now we have a chance to show that good faith once again. In proposing and debating this budget, we get to the heart of our perpetual experiment in self-government. We show the founders and our constituents that we can govern ourselves. So today I put forth my budget address. Let me cut to the chase. This proposal asks for no new taxes. At the same time, this budget proposes to do a number of things aimed at improving the lives of our fellow citizens. The people of Pennsylvania have made substantial sacrifices in recent years to help our state get up off the mat. And despite a budget that asks for no new taxes, we now have a chance to continue making some important new investments on their behalf. Investments in our schools investments to make sure more Pennsylvanians of all ages have real choices when it comes to their health care decisions, K-12 
continued investments to reinforce our commitment to the battle against the opioid epidemic that has claimed the lives of so many of our neighbors. Investments to support our farmers and agricultural producers so they can continue to sustain our rural communities for generations to come. In the coming weeks, we'll have a chance to discuss, debate, and negotiate the details of this budget. And I'm going to ask for your partnership in ensuring that this important work continues and that we, re we maintain our commitment to advancing this experiment in self-government. My administration has worked hard to make these investments possible, striving to run our government not just more ethically, but more efficiently, so that it is worthy of the public trust and it's capable of advancing the public interest. We've saved billions of taxpayer dollars and reduced the number of state employees without furloughs and all the while improving customer service. We've gotten rid of facilities. We've gotten rid of leases that don't, we don't use or need while consolidating Commonwealth operations within the capital complex. We've made the procurement process smarter and more efficient. And we will continue to look for ways to streamline government so we can invest in the things that matter most to Pennsylvanians, while at the same time serving them better. Today, however, I want to focus on the most significant element of this budget proposal, a comprehensive plan for preparing Pennsylvanians to compete and win in our rapidly changing economy, a plan to create a new generation of prosperity in our Commonwealth by building the strongest workforce in the nation. The credit for our economic success has always belonged to the people of Pennsylvania. The innovators who turned new ideas into new industries, the business leaders who built great companies, large and small, and the working women and men who toiled in the fields and mines and factories, not to mention the research labs, the classrooms, and the cubicles. There's a reason Pennsylvanians know names like Carnegie, and Hershey and Westinghouse, and the reason why we believe so strongly in the power of our work ethic and the importance of individual responsibility. That's who we are. But in the background, government has been there working on our behalf, building canals and highways so manufacturers could get their goods to market, protecting the integrity of the marketplace to ensure fair competition, and helping to unlock the potential offered by our abundant resources. In the end, however, our most important economic resource has always been our people. It's always been workers that have propelled our prosperity. And that's why we've always made sure to invest in public schools, and universities, and training centers. Because the path to prosperity begins with an educated workforce. That's as true today as it has always been. But while that principle remains intact, a lot about our economy has changed. New businesses, new industries, new technology, new competition. And with all that, we have found a need for new skills. Over the last four years, Pennsylvania has created more than 12,000 new businesses and more than 239,000 new jobs. We've begun to match and advance beyond our neighbors. Now it's time for us to really pull ahead. Today I present a comprehensive plan to help grow our economy by continuing to invest in our workforce. This plan calls on contributions from the business community, labor unions, educators, research institutions, students, parents, and adult workers. And it increases opportunity for every Pennsylvanian at every stage of life, from birth to retirement. I'm proposing a package of policies and investments called the Statewide Workforce Education and Accountability Program. It's the next step we can take together to build on all the work we've done over the past four years. Consider just how far we've already come. We've made Pennsylvania a leader in computer science education by establishing a workforce development initiative that invests in computer science and STEM education programs for our K through 12 students. We've increased the number of career and technical education students earning industry recognized credentials by 34%. And we've increased the number of credentials earned by those students enrolled in career and technical education programs by 27%. We've provided high school students 
options to demonstrate graduation readiness as alternatives to high stakes testing, standardized testing. We've increased participation to nearly 800 registered apprenticeship programs and almost 17,000 active apprenticeships. And we, and we have assisted nearly 3,000 companies in training more than 145,000 incumbent workers across the Commonwealth to help employees develop new skills to thrive in their jobs. But we know that there's more to do. When Amazon made its decision to locate its second headquarters somewhere other than Pennsylvania, it cited workforce concerns as a main reason. And in Western Pennsylvania, we struggled to find Pennsylvanians to fill the jobs as welders and pipe fitters at the Shell Cracker plant. Across the Commonwealth, we have workers aging out of our workforce, and too often the next generation of workers is simply not there or doesn't have the skills to replace them. If we can't strengthen our workforce, we're going to fall behind. And we cannot let our government's response to this problem be handcuffed by stale habit. We need to continue to break down silos. We need to inject our efforts with common purpose. And we need to make sure that as leaders, we are providing direction and giving teeth to our workforce development efforts. That's why we're going to do something a little different. Starting immediately, we're going to put together a Keystone Economic Development and Workforce Command Center. Agency secretaries are going to meet each week with plans in hand and sit together to make sure no workforce effort walks alone or falls through some crack in state government. If the Department of Community and Economic Development knows that a company needs 20 welders and the Department of Labor and Industry has a welding program, we're going to connect them. Those connections within state government are valuable and necessary. But we also need to hear from businesses and from labor, not just when they're upset and not just when we tour a facility in a hard hat. We need to hear from them constantly. We need to know when there's a problem so that we can fix it right away. If a labor union is having trouble establishing a training program because of antiquated procedures, then we need to fix it. We need to get those workers trained and into the workforce. If a business can't hire a worker because of an out-of-date or unnecessary rule or regulation, we need to know about it so we can take action. If medical professionals are concerned about a licensing backlog, they need receptive ears in state government. We're also not going to try, thank you, and we're also not going to try to solve every problem of workforce, uh, pro workforce problem on our own. The command center will have a first of its kind employer fund, a public private partnership that empowers businesses to address the skills gap from their end and encourages, encourages them to share their best ideas and best practices so that we can scale them up and learn from their success. After all, government does not have a monopoly on good ideas for addressing these challenges, but it can serve as an incubator for the best ones and a partner for putting them into action. The command center is going to be led by the secretaries of the Departments of Community and Economic Development, Labor and Industry, and State, three agencies that have the largest impact on Pennsylvania's workforce and business development. We're also going to bring outside forces in. My friends Gene Barr and Rick Bloomingdale will also be co-chairs. They co-chaired my middle class task force, which helped launch many of the workforce development ideas we've implemented last year and that I'm proposing to build on in this plan. And they'll be joined by Tony Bartolomeo, Team PA, and Auditor General Eugene Di Pasquale, uh, who has worked, both of them have worked on these issues and will have important recommendations. But again, we need to do more. We need policies that start at the very beginning and end with every Pennsylvanian receiving an excellent education and the opportunity to land a good job. Last year, I convened a ready-to-start task force, charging it with finding ways to improve the lives of children under three and their families. I know that no new parent looks at their baby and sees a spreadsheet, but the fact is that preparing our kids for success starts long before they ever enter the classroom or even before they take their first steps. And providing services for children helps to get parents into the workforce and to fight poverty. 
That's why this new program includes funding for home visits to support vulnerable pregnant women, new mothers, and at-risk infants and toddlers. Home visiting programs promote healthy relationships and safe and stable home environments. They're proven to work in preventing adverse childhood experiences, giving children and their parents the skills they need to reach their full potential and lift families out of poverty and into good jobs. You know, we are already have programs like this working here in Pennsylvania. Misericordia University is home to one of only eight programs in the entire country that helps single mothers who are struggling economically to complete a college degree. The program provides counseling, housing, and other services to help mothers get into the workforce. We plan to replicate this innovative job training program all across the Commonwealth. And this program leverages federal funds to improve our child care system so we can get more kids off of waiting lists and into high quality support systems and help more parents make their way into the workforce. Pennsylvania's children deserve every opportunity to succeed when they enter our public school system. And they deserve to enter a public school system that isn't just adequate, but world class. Restoring $1 billion in funding to our schools was an important first step. But now we need to go further. We must continue to increase funding for education, starting with pre-K and culminating at the end of a student's journey. But that's not all. It's time to lower the age of compulsory attendance to age six, bringing our Commonwealth into line with the vast majority of other states in this country. And we should consider going even further with a careful study of the costs and benefits of universal, free, full-day kindergarten for every five-year-old in Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, we should increase the minimum dropout age to 18 and partner with school districts to keep our graduation rate rising. Of course, no governor, no legislator can do more for a child than a teacher can. And my program empowers teachers to do even more through a program called Teacher Works that provides them with workplace experience in Pennsylvania businesses so they can better understand the needs of employers. We ask a lot of our teachers. And if we're going to prepare the next generation of Pennsylvanians for the jobs of the future, we're going to be asking even more of those teachers, including more training and more accountability. Teachers, on the other hand, they just want safe schools to work in. They want support from their administrative staff, and they want a fair wage for the important work they do. That's not asking a lot. But the law governing teacher pay actually hasn't been updated in Pennsylvania since the 1980s. And so our classroom teachers have too often been getting the short end of the stick. I don't think anyone here in Harrisburg would say that we shouldn't value the contributions our educators have made over the last 30 years. And I don't think anyone would disagree that they have a critical role to play in securing our prosperity in the next 30. And yet, our government has failed to address this injustice. That has to end now. My plan increases the pay floor for teachers to $45,000 a year. This is a real investment in our future. It's an investment the state, not local, school districts will make, and it's included in this budget. This is a fully funded mandate. We're also going to start competing to recruit and retain the very best educational professionals, not just in well-funded suburban schools, but in every community, every zip code of our commonwealth. This could be a game changer for our schools, especially in our communities that are struggling to attract and retain the next generation of educators. In fact, 
Most districts that cannot afford to pay their teachers more are located in the heart of rural Pennsylvania. And it's time to make sure we are investing in educators in those areas today so that we can prepare the kids in those school districts for the competitive world of tomorrow. We're also going to do more to recruit students, ambitious, brilliant, creative young women and men who are looking for the next step in their education. Our Commonwealth is blessed with a terrific system of colleges and universities, including, I would say, community colleges. We all know that our post-secondary institutions are laboratories for innovation, but they're also launch pads for job creators and the skilled workers that will fill those jobs. And that's why my plan creates a new grant program for students who graduate from a Pennsylvania community college with an associate's degree or other industry recognized credential and then stay in Pennsylvania to start their careers. If you're willing to put your newly acquired skills to work here in our Commonwealth, the least we can do is help you avoid carrying around a crushing burden of student debt. And if And if you're a parent who wants to trade up from a job that pays the bills to a job that can sustain your family, my plan includes a parent pathway initiative designed to help you get the education you need to get ahead even while you prepare your own kids for success. Indeed, my workforce program is not just about the jobs of tomorrow, it's about the jobs of today. Last year, we launched PA Smart a comprehensive new initiative focusing on STEM skills, apprenticeships, career counseling, and public-private partnerships. No matter how old you are, now is a great time to acquire new skills. And we want to make that opportunity available to every single Pennsylvanian. As part of the PA Smart initiative, we just launched a new website, pasmart.gov, that consolidates workforce resources and information for Pennsylvanians who want to get, to get the training and education to enter the workforce or expand their skills. It's similar to the business one-stop shop we built last year and that we're still improving upon. We need comprehensive digital portals for both businesses and workers that gets them all the information they need in one place and that breaks down agency barriers. This year, I'm proposing $10 million in new funding for PA Smart so we can fill more advanced manufacturing positions. We can help more non-traditional students obtain the training they need to compete in the job market and create more jobs at better wages for more Pennsylvania workers. This program also includes funding to help returning veterans get the training they need to continue their contributions to our Commonwealth as members of our workforce. And even better, And even better, that funding is transferable, meaning that veterans can use it to help their children get a college degree or career credential as well. It's a GI Bill for Pennsylvania. One more thing. We cannot comprehensively address our workforce development system without fixing our criminal justice system. of thousands of Pennsylvanians are shut out of our workforce or they're underemployed by, because of mistakes they made in their past. Families are being denied providers. Employers are being denied skilled workers. We've already passed clean slate legislation right here, making us the very first state in the country to do so. But we need to go farther. We need to make our criminal justice system more equitable and fair while helping people who have made amends enter the workforce. Indeed, even as we work on this budget, we also have to improve reentry programs and make it easier for those who have done their time to succeed in the workforce and in their daily lives. Our challenge demands an all-hands-on-deck approach. And this budget proposal itself asks Pennsylvanians to come together, business leaders, educators, students, workers, to address the challenge of renewing our prosperity for another generation. 
In my inaugural address, I asked us to do our best right here in Harrisburg to do two things. First, of course, to ensure the interests of all Pennsylvanians are reflected in the policies we pursue. But second, to show the world that Pennsylvanians know how to make representative democracy work. This budget is the embodiment of that noble effort. It asks for no new taxes, no new burdens on our citizens, while at the same time increasing dramatically our investments in the public goods that will make life better for all Pennsylvanians. This budget recognizes that government should not try to do everything. We have a long-held faith in our tradition of limited government and individual responsibility. But it also recognizes that government should not do nothing either. The public goods government invests in should make the lives of our fellow citizens better. Public goods that give Pennsylvanians the skills they need to thrive in our 21st century economy. The public goods that promote their safety and their health. Public goods that connect them more seamlessly with each other. Public goods that keep our air and our water clean. That's what this budget aims to do. It makes investments in workforce readiness, in our early childhood system, our schools, our universities, our community colleges, our apprenticeship training programs. It makes investments in ensuring that Pennsylvanians of all ages have real choices when it comes to their health care. It continues to prioritize the fight against the opioid epidemic that has destroyed the lives of so many of our friends and neighbors. But above all else, this budget proclaims to the world that right here in Pennsylvania, we do not indulge in the sterile politics of anger and insult. That here we know how to engage in the respectful and honest give and take that must stand at the heart of a functional democracy. While the rest of this country, and indeed the rest of the world, descends into divisive, nasty, and unproductive bouts of shouting, we're showing everyone else, right here in the heart of democracy, how democracy is supposed to work. So this is our challenge. It's not just about yet another annual budget. It's about our democracy. Let us show the world, along with the rest of our country, that right here in Pennsylvania, we are making this experiment work. That we are rededicating ourselves to this noble experiment in democratic self-government. Let's show that in the way we tackle the challenge of preparing our Commonwealth for a brighter future, starting with this budget. This, and no less than this, is our task. This is also our privilege. May God bless us in this task, and may God bless the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you. The chair asks the members of the House and visitors to please remain.